check the contents of the box. You should have a boiler stand with two straps. You should have the gasket kit, which consists of the flange, the plastic insert, the rubber gasket and three screws. You should have the boiler, complete with the sealing o-ring, stabilising o-ring and stopcock. You should have the hose kit with a 1 metre length of 16mm hose, an 8 metre length and 8mm hose with two connectors on the end, two tie wraps, spare connector. You should have the heater and you should have a condenser. First we will put our heater inside our boiler. To do this we use the heater, the gasket kit, obviously the boiler. We take the three screws and place them inside the flange. The flange can be fitted either way. We then put the flange onto the boiler. Take the plastic insert, that fits around the boiler like so and fits inside the flange. You then pull the flange and the plastic insert to the end of the boiler so you have that format there. Next thing is to take your heater. Now it's important that the reset buttons are at the top and the cable comes out the bottom like so. So we take our heater and we put our rubber gasket onto our heater. We then thread the heater carefully inside our boiler. So, and that's in there, we can then do up the, the screws. Doing up the screws is important that you tighten the screws equally and the flange of the plastic insert is kept to the front of the boiler. Stop. Okay, what we do then is we, we get our two straps, which has got a spring on the end, and we place the springs on the rear of the cradles. We then take our heater and boiler assembly with our cable hanging down and we thread the cable through the hole in the base. We then place the heater and the boiler assembly onto the cradle. We can then take our straps and connect the straps to the front like so. We can then connect our condenser to the vapour tube of our boiler. Firstly check that the sealing o-ring is fitted correctly as well as the stabilising o-ring. Stabilising o-ring should be about 30-40mm up from the boiler. You check them, move on to the condenser. When we fit this we, we make sure that the distillate output is facing the front. Now is the best time to connect your distillate outlet tubing Okay, 8 eight to 9 mil tubing and when it's connected ensure that you tie wrap it on there. When you've done that you can then connect your condenser. Place your condenser on the vapour tube like so. When you feel some resistance press down slight just to create a seal and you should have 5 to 10 mil gap between the bottom of the condenser and the top of the boiler. When we've done that, we then take our 8mm tubing with the two connectors. We then connect this 
to the outlet, which is the top of the condenser. We then connect it to the connector side arm of the water constant level control. We can then take the spare connector from our hose kit and connect that to a cold water inlet connector to the condenser which is on, on the, uh, the lower. This then is the connection you will make to your cold water supply. Use quality tubing and make sure you use hose clips, tyrex etc. When connecting it onto we then take our 1 meter length of 16 mil hosing. Now we're going to connect this to the drain of the boiler water constant level control there. What we do is we place it into a beaker of hot water. This will make the tubing more supple. And we found between 20 and 30 seconds uh, is enough to, to, to enable us to fit the tubing onto the drain here safely. And that's been in the water for a while, we then connect it onto the drain of our boiler. I've not put the tubing on fully, um, obviously you will put the tubing on a lot more and also tie wrap it using one of the tie straps provided. The drain, when it leads away from the water still, you should ensure that it moves smoothly down away from the water still with no kinks because you will create problems if you have kinks in the drain. When you've done that, ensure that your stopcock is fully closed. So, and remove any covers, especially the one from the funnel that you may have left. Connected your drain, you can then choose the location of your water still. Uh, the water still can be wall mounted and there are two wall mounted holes provided. So, when we have our water still fully complete, connect your cold water supply, turn the cold water on, let the water run through and you can check for any leaks. If there's no leaks, turn your cold water off, you can then open your stopcock which will drain all your water from the water still. Then close your stopcock again. When you've checked your water still is complete, now is the time to connect your electrics. This should be done by a qualified electrician and this equipment is permanently electrically connected equipment. So it needs to be permanently connected to the mains. 